What's up everyone? Welcome back. I am Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and yes, we are building a Swift UI map app. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. This is the first uh, official video of the playlist. So in this video, we're basically just going to set up our Xcode project. We're going to import some data. I have links below for you guys to download some starting data. Uh, and we're just going to basically set up our data model, uh, our location data model for the app. All right, let's have some fun with this app, guys. Uh, I am on my computer here. Let's open up Xcode and let's create a new project. It, this is going to be just a regular app, of course. So let's click on app. Uh, let's click on iOS because we're only going to build for the iPhone and the iPad in this tutorial. So regular app, iOS, click next. And the product name, I'm going to call this Swiftful Map App. You can call it whatever you want. I do not care. We are not putting this in the App Store. The team, I'm just using my personal team, which is an Apple developer account. The organization identifier, let's leave it as is. This should be com dot and then either your name or your team or your organization. And then it will create a bundle identifier based on the organization identifier plus the product name. The important thing on this screen is to make sure that we are building a Swift UI app. And the language, of course, is Swift. Now, this is a beginner tutorial, so we are not going to use core data or write any tests for this app. Uh, if you want to learn how to use core data or tests, I do have videos covering both of those on my channel. But this is going to be a very beginner app, so we're not going to do any of that. Let's click Next and find a place on your computer to save it. Go ahead and click Create. And it should then create our Xcode project. Now, I'm going to make it full screen here. Let's close the inspector on the right side and click resume on the canvas just to make sure we are all connected here. Uh, at the top, I'm going to switch my preview here. So you can see the preview on the right side is currently an iPod Touch. I don't know why this is the default in Xcode, but let's make it an iPhone 13 because it looks so much better. Click resume again. We should get that nice sleek looking iPhone 13 on the right side here. Looks great. So the first thing we're going to do in this app is actually import some content that I already have created for you guys. So in the caption below, there should be a link to some downloadable resources. Go ahead and click and download that content. Uh, I have it right here. Right now it's on nicksarno.com backslash downloads, and this is what the screen looks like. I do plan on changing this website and that link in the near future. So if it looks a little different when you're watching this, don't be alarmed, but wherever it goes, there should be some sort of download button for resources for the SwiftUI map app. So go ahead and click that. It should automatically download to your computer. And if you open up that file, there should be two files inside. Firstly, an assets.xc assets folder. This folder is the same as the assets folder that you have in your project. So in your project already is a blank assets folder. It looks like this. Uh, there's no, no content inside. And this folder is the exact same thing. There also is a locations data service, which has some pre-made data, which I'll get into in a second. So first, let's just get our assets into our app. So what I'm going to do is in our app here, I'm going to right click of the current assets folder and just delete it from the project. I'm going to move it to the trash. And then I'm just going to take our downloaded assets folder and drag it on into our project. And we should get this pop up. Let's firstly make sure that we are going to copy items if needed. So this way we have we copy the items so that they're actually in the bundle and not just in our downloaded folder where we have them right now. Uh, add to folders, we'll create groups and then add to targets it is important that we check this because we want these to be uh, available for use inside our app target here. So let's click finish and we should get our assets folder back in our app here. And now I'm going to run through this really quickly. There's an accent color. The accent color I have is this bright red, which you can change it if you want to click on it. Open up the inspector on the right side, show color panel, and then you can change the accent color to whatever you want. I'm using this red here, this maraschino color. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm also going to use the same red in light and dark mode. We're going to support both modes, but we're going to use the same accent color. If you want to use different accent colors in light and dark mode, all you need to do is change the appearances here to any and dark. And then this will be the light mode version and this will be the dark mode version. So then you can uh, go ahead and change it for dark mode to appear differently or something like that. 
but for now I'm just going to leave this as none so we have a universal red accent color in light and dark mode. There also is an app icon which I've added for you guys already. It's, it is a very basic app icon. I would not use this in actual production, but uh, I wanted to focus on the actual code in this app and not the app icons. So here is what it looks like. It's a picture of the Coliseum. Uh, we also have two folders here. I added a folder called locations and inside the locations folder is two subfolders for Paris and Rome. Just trying to keep it all organized and there should be a bunch of pictures in each of these folders. Uh, of the destinations. So you'll notice here that I've labeled them specifically with the location name and then one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, because we're going to reference these exact image names when we go and build our app. All right, lastly, I have a logos folder, which is just our regular logo, which is a square aspect ratio, and then a logo for the launch screen, which is in the aspect ratio of the actual iPhone. Again, I did not want to spend too much time with the logos and the launch screen in this app, so we are just keeping it simple here. I will throw out there, if you did not want to drag the assets, the entire assets folder into the project and you wanted to just add these manually, you could also go ahead and do that. Uh, all you would have to do is go into the assets folder. So I could go into maybe the locations here and go to Paris and I can go to the first Eiffel Tower. And then I can take that image and just drag it in to my project. I don't need to do that because I just dragged the whole assets folder, but just showing you, you guys could do the exact same thing. And you'll also be able to add more locations uh, after we finish this app. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is create models for our locations. So each of these locations, so like the Eiffel Tower is going to be its own data type. So like here we have Paris and then we have the Eiffel Tower and the Eiffel Tower is going to be its own location, which is going to be basically its own custom data type. So let's start creating that now. And in this app, as I said in the description, we're gonna use MVVM, Model View View Model. I've covered this a bunch of times on my channel. I think you guys are probably getting comfortable with this now, but just to stay organized, let's right click the navigator and create a new group. We're gonna call this first one Models. Let's right click and create another new group. We'll call these, this one views. And one more time, right click new group and this will be our view models. All right, I'm gonna put the view models in between the two. And so now we have our three folders here. This is gonna be perfect MVVM, right guys? First thing we're gonna do is create the models for these locations. So in the models folder, I'm gonna right click, create a new file. It'll be a Swift file. Now we're not gonna use a Swift UI view here because that we would use a Swift UI view when we're building a view and we need a preview for it. But for the model, there's not gonna be any view or preview. So we're just gonna do a Swift file here. Let's click next and let's call this one a uh, location. Let's go ahead and click create. And then in this blank file that we're gonna get here, I'm gonna create a struct and I'll call it location and I'll open the brackets. We're gonna have a struct called location and then inside of this struct is gonna be all of the data for a specific location. Now we need to figure out what kind of data is each location going to have. And if you open back up that downloaded folder that we had a couple minutes ago, there's a locations data service inside. And if I double click it and open it up, we can actually see inside this file here is very simply, it's a class with one static constant called locations, which has an array of locations. So this location is the location that we're making right now. And we can see that each location is going to need a name, a city name, coordinates, a description, image names, and a link. So I'm going to just copy one of these really quickly and close out of that and then bring that into our app here. So let's make a comment, multi-line comment with the forward slash asterisk. So each location is going to have a name. So let's say let name of type string. We'll say let city name of type string. Let's say let coordinates of type. And we can see that this needs to be a CL location coordinate 2D. So let's copy that and put that here. We're going to get a compiler issue because this file cannot find what a CL location coordinate 2D is. 
And that's because CL stands for core location and that is found within the map kit. So right now we're just importing foundation, but we also need to import map kit. All right. After we have coordinates, we have a description which also looks like a string. So we'll say let description of type string. Let's see, we got image names. Now image names is going to be an array of strings. So these are not an array of images, but an array of strings. And that's because we don't want to include the actual image asset inside our location. Instead, we want just a reference to the name, and then we're only going to get that image once it's actually on the screen. So we're just referencing the image names here. So we'll say let image names, image names of type array of string. And then finally, we have a link, which also looks like a string here. So we'll say let link of type string. All right, this is our very simple data model for location. So every location needs to have all of this information. I'm gonna delete this comment below here. And let's import some locations to our app now. So on the navigator again, I'm gonna right click and create one more new group and call this data services. So any file that is either getting data from a data source, so like a backend database, I'll put that in my data services file. For this app, of course, we're not using a live database, but we are gonna have this file that we just downloaded uh, inside this folder. So I'm just gonna take this file and drag it on in to our data services folder. Let's again, copy items if needed and add to targets, make sure that's checked and click finish. So now we should have a locations data service in our file and it should turn green here. If this location is green, that means it's understanding the location file that we just built here. So if we did not have this in our app and we imported the locations data service, it's not gonna be green, it's because it does not know what a locations data type is. And if we uncomment it, of course, it'll compile again. So this is a great spot to check if this file is throwing any errors. If you're getting errors right now, that means it means there's probably a mismatch between what the location is in this file, having all of this data here, versus what the location is in your actual model. Obviously, when I built this the first time, I built these locations purposely to match up with this location's data service. Looking through here really quickly, you guys can see that we have uh, the name of each location, the city name, coordinates. I found these coordinates on Google. Uh, you can literally type in coordinates for any place in the world and Google will give them to you. Uh, description I got from Wikipedia, it's just the first two, two sentences and then we're gonna link to the actual Wikipedia below it. And then the image names for each of these locations I have, it's an array of all of the image names associated with that location. So Rome Coliseum 1 is the first image name for the Coliseum. And if I go to my assets folder and look at the Rome Coliseum 1, it's the exact same image name here. So if you wanna add more locations to your app, all you need to do is add them to this array of locations. So probably at the bottom, you just copy one of these locations and then paste a new one, change the name, data, change the coordinates, and then just make sure the image names match up with whatever you have in your assets folder. So you might wanna create a new folder here and then import uh, whatever images that you want for that location. All right, last thing I wanna do in this video before we wrap this up is just make sure that we are all connected and we have all of our data in our app. All right, so as long as there's no errors here, you should be good to go. Another way to check that is just click build and build and run your app to a simulator right now. And either the simulator is going to launch and everything should be all set up correctly, or you're gonna get a bunch of errors that maybe your location isn't set up correctly. Uh, I just press build, we can see that it's launching my app. I'm not gonna actually do that because I know everything is set up correctly, uh, but now we are good to go and actually start building this app in the next video. So that's it for this video. We set up our assets folder, we got our accent color going, our app icon, we have our location images, our logo images, and then we've imported our data service which is an array of type location. And then of course our location has all this good data here. 
We're gonna do some edits to this location in future videos, but I think we're good to actually start building our app now. But that is it for this video. It was probably a boring one, but I think it was pretty quick and easy, and we are now set up to actually start building in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.